and welcome back to my channel. If you don't know who I am, my name is Jessica Likewise. I'm the CEO of Hope Education Services. I'm studying for my BCBA exam. I also partnered with Dr. Keith's story. He is amazing, 30 years of experience in the field of ABA. He has a PhD, a BCBAD, and he's helping me a little bit with studying. He's also gonna help you today with studying and talking about error correction. We also have exciting news that we have partnered to, um, I'm helping Dr. Keith sell some continuing education units. So stay tuned to the video. You can learn more about error correction and how to get those CEUs. Hey guys, and welcome back. Like I said, today we have Dr. Keith Story, a special treat, who's gonna give us a presentation on error correction in order to help you study for your exam or if you're in the field of ABA, better understand how to help learners who are performing incorrect responses. So Dr. Keith, thanks for being here and take it away. It's always great to be with you, Jessica. So no matter where you're working, if it's in a school, in home setting, with adults or whatever, Learners are gonna make errors. We all make errors, it's just part of human life. Um, so you need to understand what you should do when a learner makes an error. So I'm gonna bring up a PowerPoint here and hopefully I won't make an error in bringing it up, but we'll see. So when the learner makes an error, it's really critical that you stop the learner immediately. And you want, so you wanna interrupt them and stop them in a non-punitive manner and just, hey, stop wait, whatever the case might be. But if you let the learner continue, then what they're often learning is that the mistake that they made is part of the chain of behaviors. So you want to stop them so that they don't learn that. You want it to uh, make sure that you don't let them learn the incorrect response as part of the chain. So you stop them right away and then you recreate the situation. So if you're using a task analysis for instruction, you want to back up three steps if as possible in the task analysis, or you can even go right back to the beginning. And then you want to repeat the step or the steps that are leading up to where they made the mistake. But you want to provide information or cues on what they need to do correctly. So this is where you could do some video modeling, you could model the, the uh, step that they need to do correctly, you could tell them what to do, you could show them a picture of what to do, whatever inf information is gonna be appropriate that they learn what the correct response is. So then you repeat the, repeat the step again, and then you deliver praise, reinforcement for the correct response, and then you want to repeat the step a second time with a little less assistance to see if they're learning to respond to the SD in the environment correctly. And then you want to note the error that the student or the learner made. And there's three types of errors. There's initiation errors, there's discrimination errors, and there are response errors. And what you do in response to that error is going to depend upon what the type of error is. And you really want to remember that the whole point of instruction is to get the learner to respond to the appropriate or the natural SD in the environment, that they're not just responding to what you're telling them to do. So those are the, the five steps of error correction. Stop, recreate, repeat the step, repeat the step again, and note the error. And if you do that, then you'll uh, get rid of a lot of the errors that the learner's making and your instruction will be much better. That was perfect. Thank you so much, Dr. Keith, for sharing with us. That is really helpful information. Now, if you don't mind me asking you, when I first started in the field of ABA, I was taught that you would use this error correction procedure for a child that's learning a new skill. But if it's a skill that is on acquisition, maybe they do it 80% of the time, that you would provide an informational no, and then you would um, do no, no, so give them two chances and then prompt them and then repeat. Have you do you differentiate the prompting procedures for whether or not it's a skill in acquisition or a brand new skill? No, because they're making an error in the chain of behaviors or the task analysis they're doing. So it doesn't matter if they're just learning the task or if they've been doing it for a while and then they make a mistake. Um, it's just you want to go through those steps so that they're uh, learning uh, what the correct response is. So I don't make that differentiation. 
Okay, so these five steps, then just to clarify, they are for a task analysis, not for discrete trial training. Well, for discrete trial training, if it's just a one-step thing, then you would just stop them and uh, recreate the situation. So you went back up because there's no steps in the task analysis to back up if it's just a one-step response that the learner needs to do. Okay, that makes perfect sense. So you are advocating for never, once a child makes an error, don't prompt them before you give them a chance to repeat the error. Right, see, the, the key thing is stopping them right away and then recreating the situation so they have a response, a chance to respond appropriately once you've given them more information. So they may not understand why the response was incorrect and you need to tell them, show them, whatever the case might be, so they understand that that's the correct response, that's the incorrect response, and here's the correct response. Well, that makes a lot of sense, and I really like that. I'm glad I asked because I know I was taught something different initially, and maybe you, like myself, were taught the no, no prompt repeat procedure. Now, ironically, I actually stopped using the no, no prompt repeat procedure, which is what I learned from the agency that I started working at many years ago, like over a decade ago. And I actually started to implement what Dr. Keith is saying to make a user prompt as soon as a child makes an error. So I'm glad that we're on the same page, but I wanted to bring it up just in case anyone else had been trained the way I did. So you can use your own judgment as to which one you want to use. But I have definitely found, like Dr. Keith says, it makes much less sense to give a child a chance to make the error the second time and much more sense to uh, not let them make that error and give them, give them that information, even if they didn't necessarily need it. Um, I find it is much more effective that way than to not provide them the information and let them practice the wrong or just guess the right answer. Right, and we did a previous video on positive and negative exemplars, which you may want to go back and uh, view again, or if you haven't seen it before, uh, take a look at it. Because if the learner doesn't understand the distinction between what's a positive response and what's a negative response or correct or incorrect response, you need to provide information to them so that they can make that distinction between what's the correct response and what's the incorrect response. Yeah, and if you guys wanna see that video, just click right here, because I will have a card to it that you can play. So that it will be if you wanna watch that video. So Dr. Keith, this has been super, super helpful information. I really appreciate you coming on. I am actually, now we talked a lot about prompting in this video, so I'm actually gonna be also um, posting a video later today that discusses the difference between a stimulus prompt and a response prompt. So if you want to check out that video, you can check that video out right here as well. And so that's, an important, that's an important thing to understand, the distinction between those two things. I'll just give a plug here for a book on systematic instruction of functional skills for students and adults with disabilities. So this book goes into more detail on the things that we're talking about here. Yes, and all of Dr. Key's um, books are amazing, and they're all going to be in the show notes below, so if you want to check any of them out, definitely do so. Also, like I said, um, Dr. Keith created a continuing education unit on inclusion. It's really good. I got to watch it. I enjoyed it. I learned a lot from it. Um, I am helping him to sell that from my website. Now, I am not a BCBA. I'm not accredited by the BACB. I hopefully will be within 30 days from now, but I am not, um, I, I am not licensed to be selling CEUs, but Dr. Keith is, and I'm simply just helping him share yeah. it from my website. So if you want to check out the CEU on inclusion, head over to my website, hopeeducationservices.com, and you can purchase it directly from there. So thanks everyone for being here. Thanks, Dr. Keith, and we'll see you on the next video.